What's up guys, my name is Justin and I'm an incoming medical student at the Case Western Reserve University School of Medicine set to start later this year. It goes without saying that gaining acceptance into medical school is not easy. While I was navigating this whole crazy pre-med process, there were so many times where I doubted myself and didn't think I was going to make it. There are so many moving parts in the process and it becomes really confusing and intimidating, but YouTube videos like this one you're watching right now honestly gave me a lot of great information and helped me become a competitive applicant. So hopefully you find this video somewhat helpful. So let's start with your stats. Your stats refer to the hard metrics of your application, the dreaded GPA and MCAT. I've said it before and I'll say it again, stats are not everything. They'll get your foot in the door, but the rest of your application gets you to the finish line. First, let's talk GPA. Maintaining a good GPA takes discipline and hard work over the course of many months and even years. Think about the effort and time it takes to get an A in organic chemistry and then add on three or four other classes to that. Most medical schools consist of a two-year preclinical curriculum and medical school admissions committees may use this information to gauge how you'll do in that kind of environment. So what if you don't have a great GPA? Well, an upward trend, meaning that your GPA started off a little rocky but improved over time, can really help you out here. After all, the admissions committee is accepting who you are today and not the freshman that didn't know how to study or manage their time. And if you don't have a strong GPA and you don't have an upward trend, you can start one by doing a post back program where you're taking higher level science courses and showing the admissions committee that you do have what it takes to handle medical school. Your MCAT is the next part of your stats story. Ask anyone who's taken this exam before, it is no joke. It takes people months upon months of studying and preparation to do well on it and it's graded on a curve to keep the mean around a 500, although I do think the mean has moved up to about a 501 recently. GPA is so variable depending on where the student went to school and what they majored in, so the MCAT can be a measuring stick to quickly compare thousands of applicants. Standardized testing does not stop in medical school, so admissions committees may be using the MCAT score to determine how you'll do on those future tests. Let's be real for a second. There are thousands upon thousands of applicants vying for 50 to 250 seats at medical school. The admissions committee is going to have to use your stats to quickly compare you to your competition. So what's a good GPA and what's a good MCAT? Well, I'm not an admissions expert, so I won't get too deep into this, but I definitely recommend taking a look at AAMC table A23. This table gives you a great breakdown on applicants based on their GPA and their MCAT. My GPA was a 4.0 and my MCAT was a 520, which puts me into the 3.8 plus and 518 plus bucket, where 83.2% of applicants were accepted. Now, I wanna be clear, this does not mean that I had an 83.2% chance of acceptance. My application and your application will be reviewed holistically, meaning someone with a 3.0 and a 518 that had no clinical experience, volunteering, shadowing, research, and so on is a lot different than someone with the same stats but who had those experiences. You can probably guess which one gained acceptance and which one was part of the dreaded 17% of high stat applicants that was not accepted. There are two other reasons why I think I had a successful cycle. Number one, I applied early, and number two, I had a well-balanced school list. Like I said in my previous video, I submitted my primary application in early June, which helped me be verified by late June. For those of you who don't know, the verification process can take upwards of six weeks mid-cycle, and schools cannot send you a secondary without MCAS verification. So don't be that person waiting for their first secondary while interview invites are already being sent out. After all, this is a rolling process for most schools, so you want your application under consideration while most, if not all, the interview invites and acceptances are available. In terms of school lists, it's really important that you apply to schools that you're in state for while also avoiding making a top-heavy school list. If you're curious about what my school list was, feel free to check out my application results video. Now let's move on to your extracurriculars and activities section. These can be listed into different categories and I'll put them on the screen right now. Now let me stress the fact that you do not need to do all of these and put them on your application. It's really important that you pursue things that you're interested in, passionate about, and enjoy doing because number one, it decreases the chance that you'll burn out because you just don't enjoy your days, and number two, it makes writing about your application and talking about your experiences a lot easier during your interviews. Real quickly, I want to give you guys a breakdown of some of the things I did. I work as a medical scribe for a general surgeon. I've worked as a research assistant at an orthopedic biomechanics lab and was also credited as a second author on a publication there. I've been a longtime volunteer at That Neighborhood Free Health Clinic, which has been a highlight of my college career, and I've also volunteered for non-clinical organizations such as Food for Thought. I did major in bioengineering, and as part of our graduation requirements, 
I did a co-op at Depew Synthes on the Ni R&D team. I've had multiple leadership positions on campus, including president of the Filipino American Association and also president of the Society of Asian Scientists and Engineers. Um, additionally, I was performance coordinator for FAA, the Filipino American Association, which has been one of my favorite experiences throughout my college career. I am a presidential scholar, which gives me a full ride at the University of Toledo. And of course, I've done shadowing both in person and online in various specialties. Last, but definitely not least, I am a self-proclaimed gym rat, and yes, I did put that on my application, and it was talked about during a lot of my interviews. It's no surprise that the medical school application also requires letters of recommendation, and these activities are a great way to find those letter writers. Personally, my letters came from my supervisor at the free clinic, the doctor I scribed for, and my research PI. I believe that these were strong letters of recommendation, but if I'm being honest, I cannot guarantee that my science letters were of the same quality just because of how big those science classes are. So keep in touch with your professors so that they don't totally forget who you are when you ask for a letter of rec. Definitely didn't happen to me. So getting back to the activities section, there were other activities I was a part of but didn't list in the interest of time. I might do another video specifically on activities and extracurriculars in the future um, because it would take me way too long to do it right now. I don't say any of this to brag or boast about my accomplishments, but rather to show you guys that it takes a lot more than just great stats to get into medical school. Real quickly, I do want to say that this part of your application values quality over quantity. I don't want you guys to focus on hours too much because is someone with 500 hours of scribing really more competitive than someone with, let's say, 300 or 200 hours of scribing? Even though you don't need all those activity categories on your application, I believe that there are some soft requirements that do need to be in your application. Number one, shadowing. This shows schools that you've done your due diligence and roughly know the responsibilities of a doctor. Shadowing can be a little hard to come by, and as someone who will be the first physician in their family, I didn't have the connections to doctors that some other students had, so I ended up uh, emailing and shadowing my pediatrician. And of course, later on, I found other shadowing opportunities through my job and through the free clinic that I volunteered at. Number two, clinical experience. Whether you're working as a scribe, MA, or STNA, this is a great way to gain basic patient exposure and ensures that you actually enjoy working with them. Your clinical experience doesn't have to come from one of those paid positions that I listed earlier. Just make sure you're not solely doing administrative work or paperwork the whole time, because number one, it's less fun, and number two, you don't get that same exposure you would get to patients. Number three is community service. Not only are these experiences fulfilling, but they've also helped me grow as a person in a way that academic endeavors simply have not. And last but not least is research. This doesn't have to be basic science research, and no, you don't have to get published, but many schools focus on providing both patient care and also conducting research, so it's good to have experience working in a lab. The importance of research in an application is really school dependent. For example, is conducting groundbreaking research in the school's mission statement, or is there more of a focus on training physicians to serve a rural community? So you're probably thinking, how can I balance getting a high GPA on camp with getting shadowing, volunteering, research, and clinical experience, and everything in between? Well, it's definitely not easy, and I could just say that it takes a lot of hard work, time management, and resilience, but that's a boring answer, so let's get into some advice. Number one, it's about the journey and not the destination. If you're unhappy right now and think medical school is going to bring you happiness, you're probably wrong. The goalpost of happiness is going to keep moving to step one and step two, matching into a great residency, great fellowship, being a great attending. So stop telling yourself that you're going to be happy when you insert the blank here. Number two, stop focusing on the things that you can't control. You can't control how hard that biochem exam is going to be later this week, but you can control how you study and prepare for it. Number three is to find balance. Burnout is 100% real, and I have experienced it myself. Having a life outside of your academic studies and professional pursuits is important for your mental health and well-being. And my last piece of advice is that it's not a race. You don't have to take 20 credit hours every semester to graduate early. You don't have to fit everything into three years so that you can avoid a gap year. And no, you do not have to come out of the womb having the cure for cancer. It took me five years to complete my undergraduate degree, and I'm not ashamed of that. After all, it would have been virtually impossible fitting everything that I did into a four-year timeline. With all that being said, I did not do this alone. I have an amazing family that has supported me since day one. I have awesome friends who have made studying hours on end a little less painful. And of course, I have the best girlfriend I could have asked for who believes in me more than I believe in myself. So I guess another piece of advice is to find a support system that you can rely on throughout your journey. I also realized that my luck does not stop there. Because of my scholarship, I was able to focus solely on my academics and extracurriculars. 
because of my paid internship, I was able to afford to apply to 31 schools, which definitely increased my likelihood of acceptance. So take my advice with a grain of salt because my experiences definitely come from a place of privilege and I send my full support to those who have a harder journey than I do. So yeah, that's how I got into medical school. I hope you learned something that helps you do the same thing. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. See you next time.